Hi, I'm Paul Charnier, the editorial page editor of the day, and I'm joined today by day staff writer Ann Baldelli, and we're talking about uh, Tuesday's primary, taking a look back what happened here in Connecticut. Uh, uh, Ann covered yesterday's primary, and uh, as we look at the results, uh, uh, Donald Trump obviously had an overwhelming victory in the Republican contest. Uh, the, the state went for Trump uh, almost statewide with very few exceptions. Uh, on the other side in the Democratic race, we had a very close race with uh, Hillary Clinton narrowly defeating uh, Bernie Sanders. But uh, you look at the map and Sanders outside of the limes, uh, Sanders was uh, uh, very, ran very strongly in eastern Connecticut, uh, taking uh, most of the Connecticut east of the Connecticut River. As usual, though, uh, Clinton performed very strongly uh, in the cities and urban areas and with the high minority populations. Um, uh, one thing uh, that we have in Connecticut is a closed primary, which uh, uh, doesn't allow unaffiliated uh, voters to vote in the presidential primary despite all the excitement. And Ann, you ran into that uh, talking with people yesterday in your coverage. There were um, a lot of people out yesterday anxious to vote and quite a few people that I crossed paths with didn't realize that they were not affiliated with a major political party either as a Democrat or a Republican and therefore they, they were not able to vote. And um, I, I think that is their responsibility to know in advance of an election uh, whether you're registered and, and, and if so, what party. And in Connecticut, it was very well publicized that uh, you had, uh, if you were with one of the two major political parties, you had 90 days. By the end of January, you had to uh, switch your party affiliation if you wanted to vote differently. And if you were unaffiliated, uh, and a lot of people get this mixed up with the independent, which is a specific party. But if you're unaffiliated, you had until Monday at noontime to go in and, uh, and register with either a, as a Democrat or a Republican. And a lot of people miss that uh, opportunity. Uh, you know, that being said, uh, these rules are set by the, the parties, the Democratic and Republican parties. Uh, the day has taken the editorial position. We'd like to see an open primary process where if you're unaffiliated, uh, you can come in on presidential primary day and say, I'd like to vote in the Democratic primary, I'd like to vote in the Republican primary, because uh, we hate to see people disenfranchised. Uh, that being said, there's a reason the parties do it this way. Uh, it does drive new membership. And, uh, and you look at some of those numbers, and it's been pretty dramatic, the number of people that have registered because of this. Uh, According to uh, the uh, Secretary of the State's office, the Connecticut Secretary of the State, since January of this year, uh, almost 94,000 uh, new, uh, they've registered almost 94,000 new voters, 93,823. Um, of that, of those new voters, 46,492 uh, registered as Democrat, uh, 21,448 registered as Republican, and uh, 25,883 as uh, unaffiliated. So if you look at Connecticut's numbers of registered voters, which is just under uh, 2 million, uh, still today, even with those new voters, almost 800,000 are unaffiliated. So they're, they're not able still, if there's a primary, to participate. And you know, looking at those, uh, uh, those numbers that registered, uh, we get the impression that a lot of the uh, late registrations for the Democrats were excited about Sanders. And we imagine on the Trump side uh, that Trump has been enlarging the Republican base and getting a lot of regist uh, registrations for Republicans. And you, uh, you saw some of those dynamics yesterday in your report. Yeah, the, I would say that the, the, uh, the, the people most excited uh, exiting the polls were either a Trump or Sanders supporters, um, they were they were uh, enthusiastic, and uh, in both cases, as I talked to those voters, they they believe that their candidate will prevail all the way to the White House, um, and uh, it was interesting to hear and to see that enthusiasm, uh, regardless of what their position is. So now the attention will turn to the general election in November. It, uh, barring a big surprise, it certainly seems like it's shaping up as a a Trump versus Clinton uh, campaign. Uh, I think in Connecticut, you look at the registration numbers, heavily Democratic, uh, and I would say Hillary Clinton has to be the, the early favorite in Connecticut, but this has been a year full of surprises, so 
we could have some more. So keep following the day.com. We have all these numbers uh, online that you can look at and, and see how your town voted. And uh, stay tuned for continuing coverage of our presidential race. Thanks. Thank you.